Good morning. Time to make the coffee. Today's coffee flavor is Bailey's, and I'm going to have that with chocolate caramel creamer. It's going to be 89 today. Yuck. It's past my 85 degree comfort zone, but when I hear what some of the temperatures are that some of you guys get, oh, you think it's cool when it's 89 degrees. So I can't complain. But anyway, so today my friend and I are supposed to meet with the deck guy and discuss what it is that we want and the price and all that. So he's the same fellow that did my roof and my windows. So I, I know him already by now. I He's a really nice guy. I like him. And um, for any outside projects, I, would, I wouldn't even hesitate to hire him. He's, he's very much on time. He shows up when he's supposed to. You know, he doesn't blow you off like a lot of the contractors nowadays do. And he's very reasonably priced. So he checks all the boxes. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm going to do today. And then um, I see where, I don't know if you have a Menards in your neck of the woods. We have one about eight miles from where I live. And I see where they have wire shelving on sale. So I think within the next few days I'm going to take a little drive out there and get some more wire shelving for the basement because uh, my grandson has a lot of random boxes everywhere with his things, but in all fairness, he really doesn't have any one designated area, and he was hanging out mostly in the basement, but then when I had the mouse problem, it freaked him out, so <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not staying down there. So um, now it's kind of like, you know, all over the place. So I want to get some wire shelving, um, and then I have some totes, and we'll put all his things in totes and put them on the wire shelving. That way he'll have what he needs and wants if he ever gets his own place. I'm in no hurry to have him do that. I really enjoy having him live here with me. Because it's like living by myself, really. You know, he's, he's no problem. He feeds himself, and he's mostly working, or, you know, he's playing games or whatever it is he's doing, or going to his friends. So I actually rarely see him, even though he lives here. So, but I do want to get some more shelving. I have things that I want to put on shelving, too. So, I just want to make it look nicer down there in the basement. I might as well use part of it for storage rather than, um, you know, there's no way I would get a storage unit. Uh, that, that's just not in my budget. So, anyway, let me try the coffee. Cheers, my friends. I hope you're having a nice day whenever it is that we meet for our daily chat. I know some of you have morning coffee with me and some of you watch me in the evening. So it's all good. So get yourself a beverage and just put your feet up and relax for a few minutes and Shut out the crazy world, and we'll just hang out for a while. So, no rain in the forecast today that I know of. We've had rain off and on for a couple days, which was nice. Um, I have to get out in my backyard and do some, some work out there. I have to redo some fencing. I know I talked about that way at the beginning of, of the season. I still haven't done that, so, but 
I, I know it needs to be done. Part of the issue is my grapevines. Um, they're, they're so big and have so many grapes on them, I, you know, I would have to cut them way back in order to do anything with most of the fencing. So I think I'm going to wait until, um, like, late fall, or maybe, I don't, I don't know. I have to do some reading on grapevines. I know they grow on some of the old wood that they produce, but I don't know that much about grapevines. I just planted them and let them grow. I don't trim them. I know you're supposed to cut them certain ways and... You know, I, I just basically wanted to see if they would produce fruit and also for just, you know, some greenery because I think it looks nice. So, um, I was watching uh, a YouTuber, I think it was Kay Cottrell, late bloomer. On her channel, she had a fellow that was making dill pickles. And he added grape leaves to his dill pickle uh, when he canned them. And I guess it has something to do with the tannin in the grape leaves. And uh, I guess it gives the grape or the uh, pickles a good flavor. So I don't know. I may try that because I do make refrigerator pickles quite a bit. And uh, I have to make some more because um, I uh, have some produce that I need to do something with, some zucchini and some cucumbers and peppers. And I really like pickled peppers. I like all that stuff on sandwiches. So I either have to make some luncheon meat seitan soon or I have to go to Giant Eagle and buy some which is way more expensive, but saves on time. But I have a lot of bread that I want to eat up. I kind of went a little crazy with, with the bread in the freezer. and um, I like a variety of bread rather than always eating the same bread every day. I like to keep some sourdough. I like to keep some rye bread and some Italian bread. And then, of course, I have buns for the impossible burgers and the impossible sausages so I have all those things available so I have to start eating that up because I'm on a mission to eat down some of my food and that way I'll have money to go buy some wire shelving so there we go but I don't want to start that project right now I'm doing the dining room and then I want to um, put my kitchen island together, maybe get my grandson over here. I'll go pick him up. And uh, then I'll work on putting the shelving in the basement uh, more towards fall. But they're on sale now, so I do want to pick them up while they're on sale. Because I know those particular wire shelving, they run like $60 other places. And Menards has them for 30 something So I want to pick up at least three of those to put in that uh, room that I have in the basement. It's actually uh, been used as another bedroom. So it's more like a bonus room. Uh, but anybody that stays in my basement can definitely use it as a bedroom. So, all right, enough chit-chat. I'm going to um, take my coffee over there, and I will meet you at the budget book. Okay, it's budget book time. So, yesterday I did not spend any money. I did a little shopping on Amazon, put things in my cart, but I didn't buy anything, so I, I was mainly looking at the wallpaper and trying to make a decision, but there's no rush on that. Um, but like I said, sometimes um, the, the sellers go away, so if you find a good price on something, 
it's better to buy it sooner rather than later. And uh, that's what I do when I see something on sale, even if I'm not going to use it right away. Um, I buy it and then I just hang on to it until I'm ready to do what it is I'm going to do with it. I've always shopped that way. Uh, sometimes what happens is I, I buy something for a project and I don't get to it until much later, which is the negative downside of, of doing that. But um, eventually, even if it's... <laughs> Even if it's a couple years later, eventually I do get to it. So um, that's the only way that I can afford the things that I have is to buy it when uh, the price is right. So, And sometimes that means you've got a whole list of projects waiting in the background that you just haven't gotten to yet. But I'm trying to, you know, um, work those down so that I don't have so many things that I need to get done. So because of that, I'm using the things that I have as I'm organizing and decluttering and looking through things to see if I want to keep or donate. Um, that's what I'm doing now. And that's the, the plan that I have for the next year. And like I said, Doing one room a month is my goal, and uh, just working on it when I feel like it and when I um, have the time or the energy. Because sometimes uh, as you get older and you start getting some issues, which most of us do get eventually, um, it's kind of hard to plan by the day, you know, Monday I'm going to do this, Tuesday I'm going to do that, because you may not feel up to it. At least that's how I am um, with my arthritis and my fibro. I just have some days where, you know, it's just not going to happen. So this way it takes some of the pressure off of me to tick off a daily to-do list. But I try and keep up with just the basics. That's my goal every day. Um, some days I don't do anything, but you know, keeping the dishes washed and uh, the place picked up so it's not a mess. Uh, that's what I do every day, and I usually feel fine enough to do that. So, yeah, we got a new month going here coming up. Um, well, it is a new month, so I'm winding down um, July. So let me see, how many days did I not spend? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen days I didn't spend, so I'll mark that down. And I don't have my red pen handy, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15. That's not right. I'm missing a day. Well, 15 days I did spend, and 15, they were no spend. And the other must be 15 or 16. I miscounted here somewhere. Um, were kind of low spend because they were things that I wanted and needed and I always bought them on sale or most things on sale but at the lowest price that I could find so okay that's winding up July 2024 so we'll see how I do in August all right this morning's use it up brunch is, I still had some vanilla yogurt left. I've had that for quite a while. It's still good. And I had some homemade strawberry syrup. So I put it in both of these yogurts today. This is today's uh, portion. And then I have a little bit left for tomorrow. And I put the rest of this strawberry syrup in with that. 
So this I'll eat today. I added a little bit of cinnamon sugar on top. I have one avocado that needs to be eaten. And then over here I have some strawberries that are going to be going bad by tomorrow. So what I'm going to do, I haven't done this before, but I'm going to cut them up, stick them in here with a little bit of uh, cinnamon sugar, and cook them up in the microwave. So that way, by cooking them, I'll preserve them a little longer. So that's what I'm doing here, and we'll see how that turns out. Well, cooking the strawberries in the microwave uh, turned out fine, except you have to watch that it doesn't boil over. So I cook these for four minutes, and uh, I think that'll be just fine. I'm going to save these and add them to my yogurt or pancakes or waffles or whatever. And that way I didn't have to throw away those strawberries that were starting to go bad. So just saving money on food, it's what I do. Well, here's this morning's brunch. I have half a slice of sourdough with a yellow tomato and avocado. Used up the rest of the avocados. And my yogurt with the strawberries. So trying to use up what I have. I've decided I'm going to make myself some luncheon meat out of seitan. So here I'm pressing some extra firm tofu. Um, I want to get as much water out of that as possible. I have some homemade mushroom powder. Some liquid smoke. This one's hickory. I have this bacon seasoning that I put together myself. I want to use some of that because that's always good on a sandwich. I have molasses bacon. I want to use some of that. Just things I want to use up. Oops. <laughs> I have the smokehouse maple. And I have some um, no beef base. Better than bouillon. So that's what I'm going to use to flavor up my seitan. And, you know, lunch meat is on the salty side. So it's what gives your sandwich that extra kick. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some of these seasonings. I'm going to add some nutritional yeast, some um, vital wheat gluten, and then this block of tofu. So that's what I'm going to make my quote and unquote luncheon meat out of. So we'll see how it turns out. All right, well, I'm kind of cooking off the cuff here. I'm I'm sort of very roughly going by proportions from 86 Eats turkey loaf, but totally different seasonings. So in here I have the block of tofu, very well drained and dried. I have about, oh, two teaspoons of um, tomato paste. I have a teaspoon of better than bouillon. I have two capfuls of liquid smoke and about two tablespoons of oil, a neutral oil. And I'm going to blend that up along with this seasoning mix I made, which has nutritional yeast. I'm not going to use all of this. Um, I'm going to put like two tablespoons or a little more in there and taste it because this all has salt in it and it's all either bacon flavored. I'm just trying to use up some of my spices that I've had hanging around forever so and making it into something edible. So I'm going to go ahead and add those, and uh, then I'm going to blend it up and add a little water because that's what's going to be going in with my one cup of vital wheat gluten and two tablespoons of cornstarch. So I have to see how that ends up. And I want to add a little bit of pepper to this yet, too. 
All right, well, that's what's going to be in my lunch meat seitan. All right, I added the um, tofu mixture to the um, seitan mi mixture to the gluten flour. And now I'm going to mix this up and see if it needs any more water. And then I'm going to let this run in the food processor for several minutes because this I want this to be a very firm dough. And, uh, yeah, I'm just using up what I have rather than spending the money because buying just a little tiny bit of vegan luncheon meat is over $5, and it, it's just a very small amount. So this will do nicely, and it'll work that much better. Okay, well... So this was one cup of gluten flour and two tablespoons of um, cornstarch and some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast adds B vitamins, which is hard to get from anything other than animal products. So I'm just going to add a little water if I think it needs it. I don't want the dough to be too wet or too dry. So I'm going to play around with it, and um, yeah, it's it's easy to make your own seitan. It's not hard. All right, well, I'll be back. Well, this dough looks good. It's not sticking to my hands. It's uh, soft. It's not dry. It's just about right. I'm going to add this now to the food processor and let it process for three to five minutes. And um, then I'll finish that up, roll it into a log, wrap it, and bake it. So, yeah, if you have an interest in uh, making seitan, you can make this any flavor you want. Go on over to 86 Eats, and she's got a lot of really great recipes on her, on her blog and on her YouTube channel. All right. It's come together into a nice dough ball, and as you can see, it's very stretchy. That's what you want. So I'm going to let this rest for a minute, for about 10 minutes, and then I'm going to finish it up so that I can bake it. The gluten flour I'm using is Bob's Red Mill, but sometimes I use Anthony's. That's good too. It's 70 to 80 percent protein. Um, you can also add this to your bread when you're baking regular bread, and it'll give it more uh, substance. And this also, and add extra protein. So this has 23 grams of protein. So that's pretty good. So, anyway, um, I'm going to let this dough rest now, and I'm going right. to rest. Tonight's quick and easy dinner, I still have some leftover pasta. I purposefully cooked more so that I can make like a pasta salad. I have a hot dog bun. It's a brioche bun. It's still good. I have a couple of... Um, Tofurky beer brats, some Girard champagne dressing, still have a little bit of dill relish left. So I'm just going to have macaroni salad and a beer brat. And this is how my seitan turned out. Now this just came out of the oven and it needs to go in the refrigerator until tomorrow. Once it cools off, so I think it I think that'll be good and tasty, and I can slice it thin and then put it on a sandwich. So I can eat up some of this bread. So I have one one more hot dog here. I have two hot dogs and I have one more bun. So let me get this all put together. Just trying to eat up what I have and not go to the store and go shopping and buy more. 
so that I can save up some money. Here's tonight's quick and easy dinner. I have the uh, veggie hot, um, beer brat. I had some pickled onions, refrigerator onions that I made. They're sweet onions. Put some of that on, mustard, ketchup, some pickle relish, uh, some cheese underneath the, the hot dog. I added some onion powder and some of this cilantro lime seasoning to the pasta along with the Gerards and a little bit of dill relish. And then over here I have some pickled vegetables. So that was quick and easy. It took me all of 10 minutes to put together. And I'm using up what I have in my refrigerator and the sausages were in the freezer. And the cheese I had in the refrigerator too. So it all needs to be eaten up and that's what I'm doing. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and eat this and then I'll be back to wrap up my right. day. Well, dinner was good. I mean, it wasn't like a gourmet meal, but it was quick and easy and I used up some things that I wanted to use up. So, uh, making progress with cooking down the food. And um, so my neighbor and I met with the deck guy earlier today and he brought over some samples but uh, this morning we got a newspaper which I don't order but you know every once in a while they try to sell paper so they just throw one in your driveway so in that newspaper there was an ad for Menards and um, they have um, wire shelving really cheap so I was going to go out to Menards, it, it's about oh, eight miles from me, and um, pick up a couple of those shelves because they're only $36, something like that. And they're 72 inches tall, 36 inches wide, so it, you know, it's enough to store some totes. So um, I wanted to go out there for that. But then I saw also in the flyer that they have composite deck material on sale. So I took it over there and met with him and uh, I said, you know, is this something that you can do or do you just like to work with a certain um, provider? And he said, no, it doesn't matter, you know, anything that I want to do and then he'll just, he'll just do it. So, uh, and he said that I could actually, which is what I wanted to do, make my deck a, a couple feet wider. He said that's no big deal. He doesn't have to put an, another footer board under there. He has a different way that he could do it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that too because my deck is 8 by 10. And usually if, if you want to get like a pre-made covering, pergola, anything like that, none of them are 8 by 10. They're all 10 by 10, 10 by 12, 12 by 12. So I figured this way, once my pergola um, falls apart, I've had it out there for years, but it's still in good shape. But if I wanted to, then I could go ahead and get a, a pre-made uh, cover for my deck. So I also asked him if he could put some of that, uh, I, th I think it's PVC uh, clear, like a rippled um, covering, if he could, you know, put that over the top of the deck. That way, if it's raining, things like that, I can even sit out there as long as it's not, you know, a torrential downpour. So he said he could do that too. So, and you know, that stuff is cheap. So I'm going to look at Menards and see how much that would cost uh, and if it would even be worth it to do that. But I wanted it clear so that if I have plants and things down there, then um, 
you know, they'll get enough light. So anyway, um, and he's going to be doing, I an, initially I got his name from my daughter because he did my daughter's roof and he was a friend of one of their friends. You know how that goes, a friend of a friend. So then I hired him to do my roof and now my, and my daughter and son-in-law are going to hire him again to do the siding on their house. So he family's keeping him busy, but uh, you know he's he's really reasonable and he's a really nice guy. So and like I said, half the battle is to get these people to even show up. So anyway, my satan turned out a little bit spongy. And I think the problem was I didn't knead it enough, even though I did blitz it in the um, mixer, I didn't knead it um, and last time I did. And I think if I would have kept it wrapped longer, the directions say bake it 30 minutes, you know, wrap it up, bake it 30 minutes, and then unwrap it and let it bake another 30 minutes. I think I should have probably kept it wrapped and I should have kneaded it more. So, you know, even if you've made seitan before, um, it, it's a learning process, you know. It's not the same all the time because sometimes you need a little more water, sometimes a little less water. And I know seitan can get spongy when you uh, simmer it. But I didn't know that it can get, you know, spongy when you bake it, too. So we'll see. It's in the refrigerator now. I'll see what it's like tomorrow. I'll still eat it. You know, the texture is just off. But uh, the flavor will be good. So, all right, my friends. I need to uh, get this video uploaded. Um, it's already getting late. So I went to my daughter's this afternoon and hung out with her for a little bit. We had coffee. I hadn't been over there in quite a while because she's really busy and, you know, they're running around and I'm here doing my stuff. So even though she only lives five minutes from me, sometimes um, getting together isn't the easiest thing. So, all right, my friends, I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. It helps my channel grow. Don't forget to share, and thanks for watching.